my creative friends. My name is Shannon from ShannonStudio.com and I am here to talk about creativity, a creative life, anything creative. I leave it at a broad range of things and so um, happy, first off, happy Juneteenth. Hey, hey, Joan. Um, I had never, I mean, I don't know if Juneteenth was a thing last year or if it's just evolved this year. Um, but I had to look it up because I'd never heard it before. It was when Galveston, Texas read a federal order that proclaimed all enslaved people were free. And so that's a celebration in 1865. So that's kind of a celebration to um, the end of slavery in Galveston. So that's what Juneteenth is. And if I would have realized that was today, except for when I just wrote the date just a few minutes ago, I probably would have talked about something that had to do with that. But I don't often, sometimes I don't have real big plans. I just go with whatever works for me. Hey, hey, Trisha. Um, and yeah, it, it's evolved and I kind of just do what is happy in my life or something that interests me. And um, it's even funny, as I push the button, the first time I did the video, I started to push the button like five different times. And it was, you know, cause I was just so uncomfortable. But now it's like, just push the dang button, let's go. <laughs> Things have changed. It's only taken 324 videos. Um, so tonight, let's see. Oh, went for a bike ride today. I have not gone for a bike ride in a week and two days. And I already, already, it's only a week and two days after what it was a couple months and I was like doing it. And then I was already like, oh, it feels harder today. You cannot let up on things, can you? Um, okay, so gonna talk about a couple, well, not a couple, just one topic tonight. So have you ever gone skeet shooting? Skeet shooting is where you have the clay pigeons, they call them clay pigeons, and somebody either with a hand thing or with a mechanical thing, they launch these um, discs, clay pigeons, up in the air, and they go flying. So they have this certain trajectory they're gonna go. And after, you know, you follow the trajectory with your gun, a lot of times you follow, you don't have to, you can just stand there and wait for it. But usually you will follow the trajectory and then shoot it and blow it to pieces. So, um, so I've done that several times. And so I know that process of following the trajectory and then pew, um, And I was gonna relate that, I'm going to relate that kind of to our life and having a plan in our life um, and being on this course pew, and then all of a sudden poof. I think you know what I might be talking about so um, the idea is that and, and it, there's a quote that I, made me think of this I've been thinking about the trajectory for a few days and I, I've just been thinking about how we feel like sometimes we're gonna go in a certain direction and then everything is just good or bad just blows up in our face maybe it's a good blow up in our face like glitter <laughs> glitter blowing up um but it just kind of changes everything and so it's just like that visual of the the um clay pigeon just exploding and there's that trajectory no longer exists it just doesn't, it's not a, an option, it's not, it's not gonna happen, it's just not. So, um, in the book, uh, Cracking Creativity, they are using the idea of when um, you work in a lab, you go with a plan and you have this hypothesis or, or theory that you're pursuing when you're doing lab work and you're doing um, scientific work. So, he says, when you find something interesting, drop everything. So he calls this the, what is it? Yeah, he calls this the first principle of scientific methodologies. 
Okay, so when you find something interesting, interesting, drop everything else and study it. And I, right there I was like, what, what? Drop everything else and study it? Too many fail to answer opportunities knock at the door because they have to finish some preconceived plan. Okay, so that's totally me. I, when I was younger, I should say when I was younger, this was totally me. I had a plan, gonna work the plan, gonna, you know. And with eight kids, you have to have a plan. I mean, I don't really have to have a huge plan with one child, one six-year-old right now, as opposed to eight kids, 15 and under. Um, and I was a planner. We went on a trip to Nauvoo, so from the west to the east, and some places in Missouri, and I had, I made a travel, everybody made fun of it and called it a travel Bible. Because I had like stops we make, all the reservations were in there, all the, um, what, tick, you know, ticket information, places we were going to stay, places we could stop, all the Walmarts along the way because, um, you know, there, there were things to get with 20, I think we had 21 people. So there were things to get and, you know, all, all the stuff so we had a travel Bible yes I was a planner and so um, I had a preconceived plan for a lot of things I mean yes there were some things that I you know went off course but for the most part I was a preconceived planner hey hey Tamara um, it's just that that was a necessity that we had with that many people in our family so the idea is that they, and he goes on to say in Cracking Creativity, creative geniuses do not wait for the gifts of chance. Instead, they active, actively seek the accidental discovery. So the creative people, creative geniuses, I think they throw that word around a lot, but creative people let or actively seek accidental discovery. So the idea is that when a when something and, and in painting we call this a happy accident when you're painting along and and you know you have certain brushstrokes you think are going to happen or the way the play, paint's going to play on the canvas and you're going about doing it but then something else happens and it's like whoa that's really good I like that didn't plan that didn't see that coming but that's great and they call it a happy accident he's calling that idea that you're on a plan just like the the skeet shooting and the clay pigeon you're on a plan but then something interesting comes along and he says seize the moment take the moment and that act that creative accident pursue it and they also call that serendipity it, well he calls it serendipity and i just i love the word serendipity I don't think we you can I don't think I can use it enough in my life I try to think of like it just doesn't come up that often but I love that word so serendipity is making fortunate discoveries by accident random discoveries good luck making unexpected discoveries so it's that whole the whole idea of things happening and I think sometimes when we say live in the present we are wanting that kind of thing to happen we want to be paying attention enough so that life can happen. The plan that we had, yes, start it, but the plan, you know, but let let life, you know, blow up the plan sometimes, like the clay pitch, blow it up. Um, creative calling, they said, the best creators start work with a plan. Okay, you, you have to start somewhere. Then um, he goes on to say, nothing too rigid. They establish a general sense of what they're going to try to do while leaving room for serendipity. So both of those two authors use that idea of when you veer off course, when your trajectory changes by what circumstance are you choosing, it can be a moment of serendipity for you. It can be something that you embrace and move forward with. And it can be fun. So let's see, what else do we say? Um, okay, knowing how, okay, first off, I have to say my life was totally trajectory. I was like, Psh, and nothing was gonna hit me and blow me up out of the sky, you know, <laughs> my skeet shooting analogy. So I was going along and that is exactly 
you know, this we had a plan, and but then when our oldest daughter Layla died in childbirth, and then her husband died a, basically a year later, and before they died, a few months before they died, both of them said on two different occasions, if something happens to us, we want you to take Joseph because she was pregnant and she they already knew they were gonna name him Joseph and so. You know, and I, the, I was like, yeah, yeah, and the first time she said it. But then the second time when they said it, I was like, okay. So when we're going on our trajectory, that was a moment where somebody hit my clay pigeon and blew it up. And, and then now we're the parents of a six-year-old. And that is not what I saw coming. Not at all. Moving to Sweden or um, being in Amman, Jordan for four months or moving to Sweden for two years those were not trajectories that I saw happening. That was not, you know, that was not the plan. But embracing that and, you know, mourning what I thought the plan was going to be a little bit, and then embracing the new fragmented pieces that were going all kinds of directions, it, it, it was, it was, I don't, it's not quite what you say, well, serendipity kind of a, a sad entry into serendipity and and things are so exciting and having Joseph is just an amazing experience to do parenting 3.0 just amazing and um, and I, I am to I'm I'm not totally like doing it totally different but there's just a different feeling with this having one child and um, being having experience, you know, all these years of experience being a parent. And, you know, she died at 28. So we had had 28 um, years of experience as parents, as parents. And it just, it was, it, it's just a whole different experience. So, um, another quote to finish the Creative Calling quote. Knowing how to balance structure and flexibility comes only with experience. You don't need a blueprint, just a direction. Okay. I, so I'm just going to stop right there because I like to stop in between quotes and just like, okay, we, you know, having that balance, it's, it just takes some time to figure it out. When is the time that I, you know, let everything just go? And when is the time I keep the structure? When is that for the family? When is that for business? When is that for my personal self? When is, you know, when is, when do I do that? It, it, it's a trial and error and experience helps teach you that. Um, you don't need a blueprint, just a direction. Totally, totally get that. I needed a blueprint when I was younger. I don't need one so much now because I'm older and I've had more experience and I know how to balance it better. Um, and this is the key right here. The plan can change. Your plan can change and you are going to be all right. It, the plan can change as you adapt to new info, information or feel a spark of creati creative inspiration. Um, okay, I gotta read that again, just so you get it better because like uh, choppy. The plan can change as you adapt to new information or feel a spark of creative inspiration, but walking in without one, meaning without a plan, is almost guaranteed to fail. So you have to have some kind of direction to go in. You've got to be doing something purposefully. And, but then, you know what? Your plan can change. So this is like permission granted that our plans can change, our lives can change. Our little plans, what we're going to do for the day, our big plans, what we're going to do for the month, and our huge lifetime plans, they can all change. And in fact, they do change. What I thought, and all, you older ones will agree, hey, hey, Nick, you older ones will agree, you know, it doesn't look anything, I shouldn't say not anything, but it doesn't look like what you think it's going to be, um, for the most part, I think. So that's the tip tonight, giving you permission to ditch the plan, um, keep in the same direction, but ditch the plan, like, and I mean direction, like be a good person, be kind, be, you know, that kind of, you know, we're, I think we're all trying to be, go in that kind of direction. So um, if you get blown out of the sky for the trajectory, 
and things that blow us blow us up out of this blow us out of our trajectory um, failure failure in trying things because either you keep trying till you get it or you fail and try something different so it it moves you into into a different um, into a different path and you know you're you're projected somewhere else so failure and um, new information changes your trajectory sometimes moving um, does that moving to Sweden moving to Amman totally changed it for us um, changing jobs changing your financial situation either very good or not so good um, illness can change that trajectory where all of a sudden you're a caregiver and or you're um, you have somebody that you have to take care of physical illness can change things somebody yeah, yeah somebody else's physical illness can change things um, let's see family dynamics changing um, death divorce um, marriage new you know kids getting married it, that can change and all these things if you ha are older and have older kids all these things can happen to them which also changes your trajectory um, fear so those are kind of all negative things that we think of but then also there's excitement there are great things happening there's opportunities that come up that you don't see or don't know that are coming and it can be very exciting and very fulfilling um, so it's not just a negative thing that does it, but oftentimes a negative negative thing will do it. Um, but and then the, basically the things are fear, failure, and um, change. Those you know pretty much that can be wrapped up into those things. Um, so I think we just have to watch out for those things and be aware that this you might go oh this is this is gonna change everything or this is gonna change us slightly we can we can embrace it and recognize it and celebrate it if needs be and and go ahead and, and move it there's permission that, that we can change the plan can change so that's a tip tonight um, t uh, tell me if you have had plans change I know some of you personally and so it's like some of those things you're doing or thinking about, you might not have thought that were gonna be the case. So tell me if some of the, you know, and it helps other people to hear those kinds of experiences where things change. Um, remember, you have a creative heartbeat, so listen for it, and I will be back tomorrow.